Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification course on troubleshooting printers and scanners. I'm your host, James Messer. And in this module, we're going to step through the requirements from our CompTIA 220-601 Essentials Test Section 4.3, where we need to identify tools, basic diagnostic procedures, and troubleshooting techniques for printers and scanners. Also from our 220-602 exam, section 4.3 says that we need to identify tools and diagnostics procedures to troubleshoot printers and scanners. So it goes into a little more detail. So we're going to step through all of that today. We're going to talk about the troubleshooting process itself and how it applies to troubleshooting printers and scanners. We're going to talk about some troubleshooting tools that you want to be sure you have in your tool bag, some common printing problems, and things you can look for when troubleshooting some common scanning problems. Let's start with the troubleshooting process, what we should think about when we start troubleshooting printers and scanners. The first step of the troubleshooting process, if you go way back to one of our modules where we talked very specifically about troubleshooting, was gathering information. We need to first identify what the problem is. When somebody says, I can't print, what does that mean? Does that mean that it's not printing at all? You're getting no output whatsoever? Does it mean that you're getting an error message on your screen? Maybe it means that it's printing something, but what you're printing is either unrecognizable or maybe it's just a very low quality. So you want to be sure to qualify that with a person who's either printing or scanning of what they're seeing when they go through that process. Normally, you can find something somewhere that starts to lead you down a road. You can look at the device itself. There's usually a screen on your printer or your scanner that will, that will have an error message if there are problems. Maybe someone's trying to print, nothing comes out, because the memory inside the laser printer is full. And you'll see a message on the laser printer itself that says, memory full. And you'll know exactly where to go from there. There may be messages inside the computer. When you try to print, maybe a box pops up that says, can't communicate with the printer. Or it says, I'm not able to op send any information to my print spooler. And you'll know there's something going on with your computer that you need to focus on. You can look through the event log that's in your PC, especially in Windows. The event log is going to have a lot of information in it that helps step you through where you can find different pieces of information, especially if the user's gotten an error. And they said, it had an error, but I didn't write it down. And that was yesterday. And I don't remember what it was. You will very often have something in your error log. You can go back and look in your events and see what, what's there. There's also user reports. So look at what you've seen from other users printing to this printer. See if there's something you can start to correlate together regarding this printer or this scanner. And I find this one's really useful. If somebody's complaining about either not being able to print or their printout looks really bad. Look at the stacks of paper next to the printer. This is a printer that's used by more than one person. You can start to see when was the last time a printout came out and look through the quality of the printouts that came out on that printer. Is it good quality or bad quality? That will at least tell you if the problem is with the printer or if the problem is somewhere else. And you can start troubleshooting from there. Also, when you're gathering information, it would be useful if you were able to perform a test that was outside the realm of the application the end user is using. So within Windows, you may recall if you go into the printer section, you can right mouse click on a printer and go into the properties. And one of the first settings there is printing a test page. Or you can put something in your scanner and scan a test page. This is something that's built into Windows. So either use a scanning application that came with the scanner or use the printout setting for the print test that's in your Windows properties for that printer. This will give you some information outside of an application to say the printer is either working properly with Windows or it isn't. You can also use some diagnostic tools. There's some very generic diagnostic tools on live CDs that are out on the internet. But what you may want to do is download some directly from the vendor, especially updated drivers that have that test page option in there. Usually the, the manufacturer of the printer is going to have those drivers on their websites. There are also, in some cases, web-based utilities that are built into the printer itself so that you don't need to load anything on your machine or even have very good connectivity through the normal method to that printer. So check the printer itself to see if it has some web-based capabilities in it as well. When you print out that test printout, this is what it looks like. This is a Windows printer test page, and it tells you exactly how you printed, where 
where it printed from, what your printer driver settings were set to, what the driver names were, what the version of the driver is. Even though it's a test page, there's a lot of very interesting and very useful diagnostic information on this page, all the way down to what the exact DLL files, the device library files were that we were running on this print driver. And he tells you, okay, we got to the end. Some print, uh, print test pages have a lot of additional files used by the driver. Some don't have many at all. You'll just have to look at your test page to see what you would expect to see in that environment. Now that we've done some investigation, we've gathered some information, maybe we've printed a test page, we can go through the data we've collected and start making some ideas about where the possible causes might be. If we know we're getting some prints out coming out of a printer that look good or some scans coming from a scanner that look good, maybe we may want to look at individual machines. If everybody's having the problem, maybe we can start focusing on that individual device. You may want to go back and look at other documentation. Maybe you're not the only one to have worked on this printer. If you go back and look at some help desk tickets, you may be able to find that many people have been having problems with this device over long periods of time. And you can start looking through that documentation, that extremely valuable documentation, to see if you can find a correlation to the type of problem that you happen to be having. Also, the manufacturers have a very good knowledge base in some cases that you could search through and see if you're having this problem. If this is a Windows error that's coming up, you can go to Microsoft's website, type the error message in, see what you get, or use Google. In many cases, you can find an online forum where people are having problems. You, you can find and see if anybody's found a resolution for your problem there. You can now start isolating the problem as well. So we've collected this information. You should be able to tell now if the problem's in software or if it's the hardware of the device that we happen to be using. We can also start making some assumptions about if the driver is working or not based on the test page that we printed. We can also see, of course, if the connectivity is there because we were able to print a test page or not. And maybe we can think if the quality of the output isn't any good, maybe it's the printer or the scanner itself that's our problem. So now we can start moving in a direction to start understanding where the problems might be. And we need, need to think now about how we're going to identify solutions to the problem. Maybe we can apply a fix that we're thinking maybe it is the driver. Let's download a new driver, install it on our system, and see if that fixes the problem. And if it doesn't, we can then rule that out and go to the next fix and see if we can identify where that problem may be resolved. Here's something you can do that may be outside the scope of fixing this particular problem, but it's replacing the consumables, especially in a printing environment. If you're already on site and you're already in front of the device, you might as well, if the toner cartridge is low, go ahead and replace the toner cartridge. If it's an inkjet and the inks are low, you can replace some of the inks in there. You can refill some of the paper that's there. It may not have anything to do with the problem that you're resolving, but you're making sure that that is in perfect condition when you leave. Very much like when you borrow someone's car. You like to return the car with a full tank of gas. It's a similar scenario, and you're leaving a positive impression on the people that use this device. They know you're taking care of everything that's there, and it's going to continue to run when you leave the room. You also want to be sure that you're verifying that your fix is working. You may think it's working properly, but it's occasionally useful to sit down with the end user and say, run your scan or run your printout, and let's see if this is getting the exact output that you're looking for. And Get their acceptance. Make sure they're signing off on this. They know that you've checked on this. You've gotten them to confirm the problem's resolved. You can take it off your list. There's a number of tools you want to be sure you have available if you're ever troubleshooting a printer or a scanner. And the first one is that ubiquitous tool, the multimeter. Make sure you have your meter with you. Check the check the power that's coming out of your power outlets. Check and make sure you're receiving power on the cord going to the computer and to the to the printer or to the scanner. And you're able to check continuity of the cables that you're using connecting to that device. So this multimeter, as, as the name implies, you've got multiple uses available to you when you've got this meter with you in your tool bag. Another thing that's going to be useful is to have a screwdriver. This is not always used with PCs, but almost always with printers. You're going to need to get in there and perform some maintenance. You're going to need a good screwdriver or a set of screwdrivers there. And what you'll find is there are a lot of screws in here. And if you ever, ever dropped a screw way down into the depths of a printer, it's sometimes useful to have a screwdriver that might have on the end of it a little magnet so you can move that down there. Not something you want to have available near a PC because there's so many components of a personal computer and really even a printer itself that are very susceptible to magnetics. So you want to be sure that you only use this sparingly. You don't want to get it near the electronics of those devices at all. 
whenever you're performing the troubleshooting of this and the maintenance of this, you also may need to clean out either the inside or the outside of these devices, especially with scanners. Because the cleaner that glass is, the better your quality your scan is going to be. So check the manufacturer's documentation. They may tell you that it's OK to use isopropyl alcohol inside the device, but don't use it on the control panel on the outside because it tends to dry out and crack. And that's important information to have available. Of course, water is the ultimate cleaning solution. You want to be sure that if you're using water, that you're able to do it in that environment. And if you're ever cleaning and using environments with water inside of printers or scanners, make sure they're unplugged. Most of the time, these pieces of documentation will tell you to use neutral detergents, so nothing that has anything in there that's harsh that might cause problems with the internals or external parts of your printers or your scanners. If you're ever going to use other solvents inside of your devices, be very careful. Check your documentation. See what other people are using. Maybe check a, an outside part of it that's out of the way. Make sure that it's not going to cause a discoloration or eat away at any of the plastics that are used. So be very careful the types of solvents you're using when cleaning inside and outside of these colors, these, these printers and these scanners. You don't want to create any problems in the future. With almost every printer, you're going to have this capability to print out a test pattern. And this is something that may be hidden inside the menus of this printer, or it may be right on the front, tell you exactly how to do a test printout outside of any type of operating system. This is a print quality check from my desktop uh, inkjet printer. And it prints out these four color blocks here. So you can start to see if the quality is acceptable. So you can really go in there and look at the details of the printout. See if all of the different settings are there where they should be, if it's all in a straight line. And you may have some options there on how you can adjust the printout and make it look exactly the way it should. It may tell you on the screen, did this print the way you would expect? If not, it might want to do a test or perform a cleaning and make sure it's able to clean out all the separate nozzles of that inkjet printer. There's some common printing problems you want to be aware of that you may be tested on with your CompTIA exam. One of these deals with paper problems. If you ever run out of paper with a printer, you may get an error message popping up in Windows. And if that Windows machine isn't talking properly to the printer, it may be something that doesn't say out of paper. Also, paper jams might cause this. It may cause your printer to say it's out of paper, but it's really jammed up in there. You want to go to the front of that printer and see what it has to say. It will tell you if there's a paper jam. And the newer printers will even tell you what to do. Open a certain flap, change a certain setting, open it up, move it out of this view. And uh, it's able to help you clear out that setting, close it back up, and hit the Go button again. If you're getting quality that's bad, this can be many different things with a printer or a scanner. If it's completely garbled or it's corrupted, that's a little bit more of a problem you may have to deal with. Maybe that's a bad driver, or maybe the printer itself is not connected properly. If it's something where the printout looks OK, but there are spots or they're smudging, well, maybe that's just a cleaning problem inside of the printer itself. It's not really a driver issue, but you are going to get a visual indicator that there's some type of issue with this finally printing or smudging. And very often, the manufacturer's documentation will say if there are spots, if there are lines, if there are smudges, these are things you can do to solve those particular problems. Other problems when printing or scanning may have to do with the performance. Maybe that it's taking a long time to perform a scan or to perform a printout, or maybe it's just not appearing at all. You have a certain number of places you can go from that point. One of the places to go is to the device itself. Find out if the printer or the scanner has any message on the front of it. Maybe you find they turned up the dots per inch on the scanner so high that it takes forever now for that image to move all the way down the piece of paper and be transferred. Or maybe you're finding that the problems with the spooler inside of your Windows environment that has been disabled for some reason or turned off. Occasionally, you'll see that the spooler has conflicted with something. It has turned itself off. There's something in the event log that's talking about it. And you may have to restart it again so that computer can take the printout off of disk and send it off to the printer. If this is on a server, then there's a separate print server that's storing that inside of a queue. You may find that the administrator of that print queue may need to go into the queue and remove what's in there already because the job that's in there is corrupted and it's not being sent properly to the printer. And then you may have to restart it right after that to see if it's working the way you would expect. Ultimately, you may find that the problem is that the printer is just in a weird mode, especially with the newer types of printers that do multiple things. It does scanning. It does printing. And it may find itself confused sometimes. You may have to power down or unplug the printer itself or the scanner and plug it back in to see if that frees everything up and things begin printing properly again. 
If you're using a dot matrix printer, you may find some of the problems you run into are the print head not moving or not printing. And that's a problem because the dot matrix printers have a lot of moving mechanical parts. There's motors inside, there's belts, and those you expect those to always be moving. If you lose a motor or a belt, you may find that things are not moving or the paper is not advancing the way that you would expect. If it's an inkjet printer, you may find that when any type of that ink is low, whether the ink is a cyan or a magenta or the yellow or the black, if any of them gets low, you may find that the inkjet printer just doesn't print anything. You may have plenty of black ink and you're trying to print something in black, but the inkjet printer is just too low on another color for it to print properly. I know it doesn't make sense, but there it is. That's the way those print manufacturers think. They want you to buy that ink up. That's where they make a lot of money. On a laser printer, the problems are a little bit different. You may find that there are lines that streak all the way down the page. And if you ever have any type of scratching on the drum that's inside of that print cartridge, you may find that that scratch now goes all the way down your page. And that's something that you can only solve if you take out that print cartridge and replace that toner cartridge with a new one. If your toner is ever low, you also may get messages that your printout isn't printing properly or it's a very light color because there's not much toner left. So another example of where you can replace that cartridge and solve those particular laser printer problems. If you're in a scanning environment, it's a whole different set of problems you have to deal with because you're taking some already a picture that's been created and pulling it into your computer. If you're not connecting to the scanner at all, then you'll certainly have some messages. So you may want to run some test scans and see if you're able to communicate properly to that scanner. Another very common scenario is when somebody scans something in and the quality is too low. They don't understand what the dots per inch does. They don't understand what the bit, bit depth does in the scanner configuration. If you've ever looked at one of those scanner screens, many of the old ones had tons of different options there. A lot of the new scanner options even have made it much simpler. It says, is this a photograph? Is this a document? Is it something that has both color and non-color components to it? And you can set it up that way, and which makes a lot more sense for somebody who's not familiar with all those technical terms. If you're finally scanning it and it still doesn't look right, it may be, especially if there's a streak down the page, maybe the, the, the glass is dirty. You may want to get some glass cleaner and go in there and clean out the scanner, so this, the glass of the scanner to make sure that you're getting the best possible representation of what you're putting on that, that glass or what you're sending through the automatic document feeder. It makes a big difference when working with scans. In review, we've gone through a number of options in troubleshooting. First, we've stepped through the process itself of what to do when we first get that message that there's an issue. We've looked at what tools you should have in your tool bag and available to you. And we've gone through common problems you'll have printing and common problems you'll see when you try to do some scanning processes. For more A-plus videos, for message boards, and much more, you can find it all at our website, freeaplus.com.